All right, so this is actually like super fire, guys. We're gonna do another player interview. I'm gonna interview Grayson, and he is, he like me is, is part of the like the OG Super Smash Brothers crew from from Fort Wayne. Uh, unlike me, he actually has had tournament success. Uh, so that's that's actually pretty sweet to see not, too. Not a lot of it. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. My name isn't on any power ranking or whatever. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. So you uh, you start in the very beginning, right? What's what's your earliest memory of Super Smash Brothers? Um, my earliest is probably Sneem Nine, as far as like major memories go. Okay. Sneem Nine was my first biggest tournament. Um, Ripple still played DK at that time. And my crew, I think, was eight or nine people at the time. We drove in a big ass yeah. van. Yeah. Oh gosh, it the was vans. Pretty sweet. The vans. People don't know stuff like that yeah. nowadays. Because that's what that's what made uh, the drive there and back so memorable. Oh you know, yeah. Talk. Yeah. And had a good time and got to know each other and bonded. It was good. Man. Yeah, it's awesome. All right. So what what's the farthest you've ever gone to a tournament? What's the farthest you've ever had to travel? Um, I went 13 hours one time for a DDR slash melee tournament oh my in Minnesota. Oh my actually. gosh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I have like tournaments that they, they try they've tried to get me to go to Minnesota for, for like magic tournaments for example. I'm like, man, that's not happening. That's not happening. I mean in in the grand scheme it wasn't really worth it, but it was one of my first yeah, few tournaments. Yeah. But at the time I was um, in between like getting into melee and dancing games, like rhythm games. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I, I enjoyed having the split. It was cool. Yeah, yeah. And I don't see any tournaments that have splits of dancing games and melee anymore. Yeah, so. it's so weird. Like I, I because like you, you go to a bunch of melee tournaments, a bunch of them play like DDR, or, like yeah. you know, rhythm. The crossover is bigger than people think. Oh yeah, like it's, it's the same with like Smash and Magic. Like everybody, yeah. everybody who like plays Smash teams knows how to play Magic. Also. That's true, actually. That's a good point. Yeah. So okay, that's that's really awesome. Uh, how did you get into the competitive side of, of melee? Um, well, it all started with DDR and their combo videos. Somehow, okay. me and like two or three friends of mine stumbled across them somehow and that started it and I think all of our mains started out with those characters uh, so my friend was Link um, my friend Ben was um, Captain Falcon and I started with Doc so we all had cool. DBR characters um, and then later we obviously switched to like better characters right. and got more uh, in depth in the game but yeah DBR definitely started it yeah that's so awesome like what what would you say is the biggest change in Super Smash Brothers since like the time that you first got into tournaments and like right now tournaments today I would say overall execution everybody execution. everybody's oh execution it's, monsters at this point it's insane yeah it's insane like when when I went to like do, do you you remember like back in the early days like you could you could just like bank on people not being able to, to take out of stuff yeah. or like bank on like someone someone was like surprised when I could like consistently get like a, a meter cancel yeah. or like uh, I, I could do like the the, the tech roll or the, the tech into the stage with Falco's down air, I could yeah. like tech that into the stage and do a tech jump. And people were like shocked that I was getting that every time because that's really like, something people couldn't do. Now you go to like any tournament and there's like people who like, you know, why are you playing Fox if you can't even make that simple like, you know, <laughs> four input tech into a like yeah, it's the dumbest thing. Yeah, yeah. And, but I think that's also too um, why I'm becoming a little more bored of melee is because now everything's turning into a death touch. Yeah, um, yeah. So there's less chances for a back and forth. There's less like chances for mistakes. Yeah. Um, and it's because now everybody has like this mad practice tool, you know, 20XX. Yeah, and, 20XX. And Uncle Punch. Uncle Punch is actually much bigger than 20X at, the, at 20XX at this point. Now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's like the same kind of thing though, like the same thing happening. Kind of, except Uncle Punch has like in depth practices so you can change right. what exactly is going on 20xx you kind of have to like set it up yeah you yourself. have to do a bunch of setups and that's yeah. kind of annoying but like the like literally if you could go back in time like 15 years and give someone a 20xx setup or an uncle punch setup mm -hmm. like that person could probably be the best melee player in the world within like what a year two years uh Yes, but also at the same time, no, because it depends. It would have to be like a, a player who's like good by well, themselves. Well, no, I, I, I disagree. I think that if you had Uncle Punch and there was only one person that had it, like, you know, 12 years yeah. ago, right? They would be the best, but they wouldn't necessarily be implementing like new ideas, so they could still get outplayed. Right. Now, if you have the technology we have now, then, then yeah, like a cold yeah. hard, like they just win majors after majors. Yeah. Um, yeah. But even with Uncle Punch, 
Uh, yeah, if you, without the technology, you still wouldn't be like the greatest. It would just be, you'd be tough for sure. If you gave him like Uncle Punch and like a library of like game replays, like modern game replays. Sure, then, then that would change it for yeah, sure. Yeah, then you'd be the top for sure. So yeah, that that's something I've thought about like before. It's just like insane how much stuff has gone. Like when we were starting out, Twitch wasn't a thing, right? right. Like there was right. no there was nowhere you could just go and like. Actually, yeah, I didn't I think I didn't think we had a streaming service until about two or years or so after we started playing. Yeah. Maybe not even then because it was. Um, Justin TV is that what it yeah, was? Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. That's what it used to be called. And then like even even then, none of us really knew about it, so we yeah. still didn't have like yeah, and streaming. People, and like on top of that, like the equipment people were using to stream was like we were recording on VHS. Quality. To yeah, my yeah. knowledge, yeah, I remember that. I, I for sure remember that. I remember like you know, hey Dave, look, we can we can put like uh, your capture card on this one TV. And then we can put a VCR and a tape on this other TV. And then, like, later on, I can record the stuff off the tapes. Yeah. And, oh, my gosh, yeah, we were for sure doing that. It was, like, people people who just started playing, like, five years ago don't know how great they have it. Like, when you have, like, actual, like, good quality Melee streams. Because, like, nobody had, nobody had 480p, right? Nobody had component televisions. Nobody had any of this stuff that we have now. Like, so... It, the, the screens were like washed out and glared out, you know, everybody's bringing like, everybody had like bigger TVs too. Yeah. The, the smaller size TVs wasn't wasn't really as, as prevalent well, as they can't, are now. People mostly became lazy. Yeah. Right, like it was less about community, more about yourself. And that's why TVs are getting smaller and smaller. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, you, you can say maybe I'm throwing some shade, but that's the truth. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, mean like, if, you, if you put a little more effort into just carrying a 10 pound heavier TV, yeah, you could bring bigger TVs. Bigger. Yeah. yeah, and like you, you see the the street, the one that I brought. My mine is right. like a 27 inch. Right, right. Uh, and like, it, yeah, it was heavy. Yeah, I needed help carrying it. I mean, it's all about the way commitment, though, man. You yeah, gotta, you got to bring yeah. the big ones, man, because yeah. no one wants to play on. Small yeah, when, TVs. when someone's playing the grand finals, are you gonna? Like, you know, be huddled right. up against like this right. stupid thing. Like, yeah, no, I mean, like, and, and so that there's been subtle changes like that too from from back in the old days, and that that's that's one of the things I think like it's it's really interesting to me to see how like the the tournament scene has just evolved. Yeah. And, like, there's there's all this stuff that's different, and like nowadays, if you go to like a big tournament, uh, like like a hundred or two hundred entry tournament, and they don't have a streaming setup, you're like, bro, like, what's going on? Yeah. Like how how will I be able to watch my watching games and, and becoming better is another huge one. Like I remember when I first got my capture card, that was why I got it is because I wanted to like record myself playing and like get better that way. And people on the internet were saying, "Oh yeah, this is huge. Yeah. This is amazing. How how much better you're gonna get if you watch and I and play. I still didn't. I was still incredibly lazy. I just chose to like uh, learn from friendlies and tournaments. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm hoping that in the future I like decide to like watch myself and record more often because I think I can grow at a better rate faster yeah oh well that's that's a given yeah just gotta stop being lazy that's what it comes down to yes that's that's the thing that's (laughs) that's, uh you know you got to do the stuff that you need to do uh it's it's just like in super smash brothers there's execution and the execution is really so what what's your favorite favorite story from a tournament and and like if, if, if anyone out here knows og players this is a great question to ask them because like it's it's insane like tournaments the tournament scenes back in the old days was just so so different and well it's hard to place though right because um all of the really good memories are years and years ago oh yeah and, oh, yeah. and like now because it's been seven years since like the good memories the, have the been really good they all kind of like yeah. blend together now yeah. and i just remember like small points of them um Smeem was a lot of fun for me. It was my first tournament, like I said, the first major tournament I had. Yeah. Um, I would say Return to Bus City, I think it was Return to Bus City 2, I believe, at Big C's house. Oh, yeah. Um, By the way, this is a thing that used to happen to people. Uh, if you weren't playing back then, tournaments would be at people's houses yeah, like, all the time. Yeah, we slept on the floors, yeah. and 30-man tournaments packed were huge. In. Yeah, everybody's packed in like a sardine. Yeah. Well, at that tournament, is like, it was kind of like my breakout tournament. Uh, I had really done well that tournament. I beat, like, two players I didn't expect to beat. Yeah. Um, and I think I got, like, ninth or something, and there was, like, a 30-man tournament. It was really big. Yeah. It was a really good time. Um, and that's probably, like, the first, like my, my fondest of, like, when I first started out. Yeah. Besides it, it's all kind of, like all the tournaments blend together and I kind of had a lot of fun throughout the years nothing off the top of my head for sure for sure how about like after tournament you got any after tournaments now don't don't get yourself in trouble like stay away from the statute of limitations here Uh, um 
it was during the van times when like eight of us were still going uh-huh, uh-huh. to tournaments together. Uh, we stopped at a buffet. It was like, it was like, it had like Chinese and American. Like it was a huge buffet. Well, like we all went in, and I had to go to the bathroom, and I went in, came back out, and everybody was gone. And they like obviously went to go sit down. Yeah. So I just went and sat down because I figured like someone paid for me. I ate that meal for free that night because nice. I just walked through thinking yeah, that they paid for me yeah, and like oh, yeah. had a free buffet. It was the best buffet I've ever had. It was yeah, well, delicious. you can't do better than free. I yeah, mean. that's true. But it's it's the same old song and dance at that point. Like you get together yeah. every weekend and you drive an eight-person van and that's, go to eat that's afterwards. The, that's the real thing that that like makes all those memories. Because most of it was talking about like what happened in bracket how we grew what we didn't know and that's like how all the conversations went yeah so there wasn't necessarily anything like uh, to talk about i mean it wasn't really much that i could say to pinpoint it was just all yeah. melee talk oh, yeah. like usual so and that, that was great like those guys were some of the best friends i had when i was in i mean we still are we're so close yeah so. yeah all the, the people that i met like through super smash brothers we have an amazing community in this game so definitely take that definitely treasure that Okay, last question. When the GameCube controller re-release happens in November, how many are you going to buy? Uh, I just pre-ordered one okay. because I'm not going to be conservative. Sure of the right. Yeah, yeah, you got to be conservative. You're right. The Smash 4 ones were actually not as good as I think like the white. I have I have my oh, yeah, I have it up here. Oh, I don't have it. It's up, it's up on the main stage, but I have like one of the white the white ones. Uh, so I, I'm one of the white ones with the really long cable that they were selling, like, right at the end of the first production run. Uh, and I had to get it from, like, the Japanese website. I got two of them. I gave one of them to my brother because he's awesome. And uh, when Smash 4 came out, I got, like, two more of those. So I have two of those, like, new in box that hasn't been touched. When this when this uh, production run comes out, I'm probably going to get, like, ten. I don't know. I mean, I think that it's worth it because they're so cheap. But I'm oh, just yeah. so scared they're going to be close to yeah, Smash no, 4 I, I like I like so. the idea of like buying just one, making sure that it works okay, and then like once once it's confirmed that you have like good stock, then you can like buy a bunch. To, like, I agree. You know, and, and then you can like sell them later on to, to people. So, yeah. all right. Well, thanks a lot for talking to me, man. Absolutely, man. It was a real pleasure. Uh, you know, Grayson, a, a true uh, <laughs> Smash legend uh, in, in this area and a, a great friend of mine too. So glad to, <laughs> glad to have you on this stream. Here, Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'll be uh, in the commentator booth too. Actually, yeah, no, no, you, no, you, you won't because you're going to be winning. That's that's right. Well, maybe uh, probably only two. I'm sure. Uh, uh, give yourself some credit. <laughs> awesome. Well, good luck today, man. Thanks, man.